some people believe that if a child can't learn that seven times eight is 56, you teach them that eight times seven is 56. Forget it. If they don't know seven times eight is 56, they're not going to learn that eight times seven is 56. They need to go out and tell me, how many fence posts do I have to buy if you're cutting this segment? Or what's the perimeter of your fence? Or how many nails are you going to buy? How many studs? They have to see the meaning to math. Part of our culture it seems to be the abandonment of children. So a, a child that maybe is getting in trouble in a large urban area, eventually, not always, but sometimes they end up here living with grandma. And that's really tough because grandma does not have the energy to control that child. I have never had a child tell me from the hardest child I ever had, I've never had a child say, yep, I woke up today and I will come in and cause disruption. My goal today is to get you. No, they want to learn. They just don't know how to do it. And we have to help them to learn how to do it. Thanks, guys. I have been in education for 30 years. I graduated from UNM and started teaching here in the fall of 1980. And when I first came here, it was awesome. Well, it's still awesome, but I was one of three teachers, and there were only 56 children. I guess I've been principal for around 17 years or so. Can't remember. It all blurs into one long time. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Interests. Interests. Well, what drew me to teaching was I, I enjoyed children. And it was a great fun to work with the underdog child and see they accomplish things that other people didn't believe that they could. Lots of people are afraid of teenagers, but they are great. They can solve the world. One day they're like problem solvers, the next day they're playing G.I. Joe. They're in that transition where they're lost of who they want to be and what they're looking for. And, and it's just a, it's a, a great thrill to work with children. Elijah, I want you to line. I remember my second year of being a principal. I found out what adults were really like. All my life before, it was always with kids. Adults are vicious. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, do I want to become a real hard person? I believe people are motivated through a relationship, be it children or adults. The relationship we have is going to determine our success. So do I browbeat a teacher or rant and rave like a lunatic? Well, I don't like it when people come in and behave like a lunatic to me. So I'm not going to behave like a lunatic. Our HARS program has grown such wonderful things. I now have more community help coming in with the HARS program. Angel Fire Rotaries helped us with like $7,000 to build our first barn over two years. And since then, from that catalyst of HARSes, we now place children in businesses. We have a junior chamber. We have kids that have talked on radio shows. Uh, the whole world is just open up for them to see that education is real. And for some children, be it just the one who used to think nobody liked them, nobody cared, and they're carrying feed to a horse, and the horse is getting all excited, they're saying, wow, there's a purpose for me. One boy bought a clock at a yard sale. Oh, that's good. So all this, all this, everything was built by children. And Dason is our new, uh, she's the Title I teacher now, still doing her student teaching through UNM. And Dason, is very harsh knowledgeable. From the horses who were initially brought in to help extreme children, the horses are now part of the entire school and they have helped us springboard into all sorts, of, all sorts of other activities, but they still accomplish their initial purpose, which was to help children understand that they're valuable. I think everybody wants their children to learn, but because of being busy, We've forgotten that success is only generated through meeting a challenge. And some people like to get that best breather award. It's like, well, just recognize them for doing anything. Or really the recognition is that high grade because the child learned information that they couldn't, built confidence within themselves to, uh, to take on the next hurdle. Through that scaling of obstacles, the child builds self-confidence within themselves. The principal's jobs changed so drastically since when I started. You're the policeman, you're the drug dog, you're the lawyer, uh, you receive threats. I was shocked the first time somebody wanted to kill me because I was suspending their child. I, I couldn't believe it. I thought, well, I'm a principal. We're just working in schools. What's going on here? Oh, that's great. Over here, pull out some of those tips. And that was perfect. I started my This is going to sound awful, but we are only as good as the bad guy. The bad guy does something first and then we change to try to prevent that from happening. It's like, it's like technology. You are always one step behind. 
that's why I want the community to become real involved in the school because it becomes an unwritten statement that you don't mess with the school and the society and the community helps teach other people that for you. Children lots of times feel nobody loves them, nobody cares, and we are providing that mechanism for them to see that we do care. And so I think it's trying to provide alternative programs that let the child know you're important to us. Every child's successful. It's up to us as the teachers to find what that vehicle is.